shared my controversial thoughts regarding the Nike Air Jordan 1 Lost and Founds are due to be coming out soon. Um, with me kind of being annoyed about the fact that they're kind of, you know, they're trying to kind of advertise these as a, you know, them kind of going into the archives and reverse engineering an old 1985 pair of Air Jordan 1s in the kind of classic Chicago colorway. And then, of course, playing on the idea that it was sold in the mom and pop store back then. And then I got annoyed at it because essentially Nike single handedly killed mom and pop stores by basically, you know, uh, making them have to take stock of other shoes in order to sell the stuff that they knew would sell out or like the tier zero stuff, which essentially killed them. And then having other big accounts come in you know which they weren't able to compete with kind of take away some of the accounts as well so a kind of combination of effects right market effects and just a brand um you know in terms of how they spy and let people buy stuff kind of changed but essentially they kind of helped kind of kill that entire industry of mom and pop stores maybe it would have died in general but independent sneaker stores that sell kind of really limited edition shoes don't really exist they're all kind of high street stores for the most part or big sort of like multi-brand online store retailer type things like Dover Street and whatnot but those kind of cool little quirky independent stores that you'd find in random cities where they sell you know a different selection of Nikes than you've seen everywhere else they don't really exist for the most part and Nike kind of played a role in it so I kind of was annoyed a bit about that I kind of was annoyed a bit about the fact that they've only started to do these kind of faithful retros only now it's taken them so long to actually do a faithful retro and I come from the era where they absolutely butchered the Nike Air Stab they butchered the structure they butchered the Nike Air Max Lite all these incredible um, shoes that essentially they had loads of reference points from because loads of people had the actual vintage each OG shoe that they could reverse engineer, which is basically taking the actual shoe, um, kind of um, dismantling it piece by piece and basically trying to remake each component with the pieces that you have available. Now, I know some of you say, oh, it's not possible, but it is. Adidas did it. Adidas made an amazing campaign. I think it was behind the Stan Smith was the first one where they basically was able to get all these um, vintage pairs of Stan Smiths when they originally came out. I don't know if it was the 80s or 70s, whatever they may be, in the same crinkly box and however crinkly they looked and they were able to basically reverse engineer that Stan Smith and make it to, you know, and basically remake it. And they made it even, you know, with stained sole. They made it sometimes with a crease leather and the different type of laces and whatever it may be. And they were faithful, one of one sort of like, um, you know, uh, reproductions of the OG. And that ended up starting that kind of wave. And then that would led into the superstars um, coming back and looking quite vintagey. I've got a pair even here that kind of look similar in terms of the shape. These are these are a Nike SB version. Sorry, a skateboarding version of the superstar. But I does the same same sort of thing with the superstar where they actually made it faithful to how they originally came out in the 80s. I think there's actually a pair that they put out, a few pairs that were kind of like run DMC ones that they basically put out that were made to spec of how they were back in the day. So they obviously, it obviously can be done but for whatever reason Nike convinced sneakerheads all around the world that it's not possible to be done and it's too expensive even though Nike make billions and billions of dollars so I was pissed off to see that they finally got around to kind of figuring out how to do it nowadays but all that frustration aside all those moaning bits aside me complaining me hating the final images of the shoe have finally come out and it's safe to say this is definitely going to be a double up thing these are probably one of the only shoes maybe close to I can think of in recent years, like maybe the Tom Sachs Mars Yards, the first ones, um, maybe some Patters, maybe, maybe as well. I'm not really too sure on them. Maybe some Union Jordans that I didn't actually get, but I would have liked to No, I didn't get two of. I only got one, the Guava, but I would have liked to have gotten two pairs of the Blacks or something or two pairs of the Guavas. That would have been really cool. But there's not many shoes that come out where you're like, you know what, I need to double up on. I need to have one to rock and one to ice. So when the ones I rock die, I can replend them because that's the one thing that I like about doubling up on shoes because I know beforehand in previous years or in previous generations of sneaker culture you would double up on shoes so that you had another pair to kind of resell if you ever came into a tight spot but nowadays i think reselling is still what it is don't get me wrong there's more options now and that and you can sell in different places but i feel like nowadays especially with the access you get with the amount of places that sell stuff and that it only requires you to fill out a form to get entered into a raffle you're better off trying to buy as many pairs as you want especially the shoe that you want to wear because once you wear it and you beat them into the ground you're going to really hope that you had another pair like me i had a tom Sachs mars yards that i wore to the ground to the point where i'm wearing them to the gym but I never got a second pair. But now they're just beaters I wear day to day. But I wish I had a second pair because to buy them again would be like, what, seven grand, five grand again. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely incredible. So 
doubling up on these might be a sound investment, especially considering it's a Jordan 1. And you know how people are so crazy about Jordan 1 nowadays. It's like the number one premier Jordan. I think it always has been the Jordan 1, to be fair. Even though my favorite Jordan is a Jordan 4. The Tinker Hatfield designed Jordan 4 is definitely my fave. I think even though he designed the Jordan 1 too, but the Jordan 4 is definitely my favorite because it's more like a cross trainer. And if you know me, you know that I'm an, you know I'm obsessed with the Nike Air Trainer 1 Chlorophyll, the kind of old school one that Andre Agus used to wear back in the day that also was like a cross training shoe for like Bo Jackson and shit before he had the, obviously had his shoe. But the Jordan 4 has always been my favorite. But for whatever reason, the Jordan 1 has captured everyone's imagination. That's the premier Jordan that everyone wants. So when these end up dropping, considering the color, Away, considering it's a Jordan One, considering it's given given this vintage treatment that looks pretty decent now. Um, I know some of the in life pictures I saw people holding them didn't look that impressive. I hate the fact that they don't really lace the shoes. It's a little bugbear of mine, and being my bonnet that kind of gets me. Maybe because I've worked too many times in fucking you know sneaker retail to see this sort of stuff, but you can't unsee it. They need to relace the shoes. But regardless of that, they look flipping flames. You got the Chicago colorway, um, obviously with the red and the white and the black, and then up on the mud guard here, you got this crinkly, cracky sort of effect to kind of represent and um, being like vintage and cracking as well. Underneath there, that's pretty nice detail. And I just assume they will look a lot better in real life once you actually get a hold of them. And the other thing that I like too that they've done, they've gone to real detail to kind of get the box to look like the old vintage boxes because i remember buying a few vintage shoes i stopped buying them now because for the most part the ones i do buy end up breaking and crumbling and i don't have the patience to do soil swaps but one thing you do always remember kind of geeking out on was the boxes they you know the with all the sun damage on the edges and shit seeing the stickers seeing the style codes what they call the name what not sometimes the wrapping paper would be different always smell funky those are always good bits to see so the fact that they went to such detail to get the box right again goes to show they had the technology to do this the whole time but they chose not to do it and now you know they're kind of catching up with everybody else and there's some additional images here again from over under that kind of give us another detailed look above it even the insole of the shoe they've got the insole kind of um label where the nike air is a little bit crinkled as well so it kind of matches up with the old school um shoes that you would get and how they would come about but yeah, the detail on them is pretty fantastic. I'm not going to lie. I'd actually like to see these done in other colorways. So maybe they'll put them out in like that white Zen gray colorway. Remember that colorway that um, for a period of time, I felt like all Ian Connor and Lucas Sabat were obsessed with and they kind of drove up the prices because they kept, you know, buying them and reselling them and shit. But those Jordan, I think those Jordan 85s, so they're all white with like a Zen gray swoosh. Hopefully they bring those out again. I mean, obviously like a black pair, I'd obviously be up for that too. And even the outsole looks like it's been given a, vintage treatment with some of the white little dusty parts all over it as well it's absolutely smoking i'm not going to lie so everything i said about it previously it might be hating a drop hating a release i take it back i'm gonna be trying to get a pair myself hopefully trying to get two and try and secure that with that one because these are definitely ones you want to double up on because you don't want to miss out on these and regret not getting a second pair because you're definitely going to wear them to the ground i know i will and then of course got the laces and then we've got this little fake mom and pop receipt thing that triggered me and got on my nerves because like i said nike played a role in killing the mom and pop stores but hey who cares who bloody cares the caption says Nike Air Jordan 1 lost and found official images releasing the 19th of November in four family sizing. So I've heard online too, people are saying that there's like been loads loaded into the Nike in, in inventory system thing. Honestly, sneaker buying nowadays is so much better and harder than it was before. You have so much info to your fingertips, but because everyone's a sneakerhead and they, for some reason, create this artificial scarcity with shoes and don't, don't, don't just make more, it's harder to get it. So... It's a fucking double-edged sword. But anyway, it continues. Um, releasing November 19th with full family sizing. Retail price is at 180, 180 for adults, which is pretty cheap for a Jordan 1, well, especially this kind of quality they're going for. 140 for a grade school GS, 85 for a preschool, and $70 for a toddler. So you're going to see a lot of sneakerhead families, not those kind of cringy Nike talk guys. They're going to be buying them for the entire family, him, the wife, the two kids and shit. You're going to see loads of pictures of them kind of dressed up in them. It's going to be fucking cringe for us a little bit, but I don't care. And they're going to be available on sneakers app and foot sites. And obviously we're going to get them, you know, in other accounts, I'm assuming too. So I can't wait for those to drop. I really can't. They look absolutely amazing. I take back everything I said about them definitely going to double up on those definitely going to double up on those there's no way around